it's incredible. Easily one of his best works. Um, I say I probably enjoy it a lot more than Kanichiwa. I know Kanichiwa was very, very popular um, with most people. Um, obviously, it streamed really well. But I think I enjoy Ignorance is Bliss a lot more than Kanichiwa. It's, it's, it's recently just come out the other day. Really, really solid album. Um, entirely produced, I think, by Skepta with a few other co-producing credits here and there. No, there, no, I think there's a few. No, I think there's three or four songs that are produced by other people. Yeah. I know the Lee For Reals guy produced one of the tracks, right? Um, which one is it that I like? Uh, going through it. Um, he's the one that also produced um, Lee For Real. Yeah, Lee For Real, um, Playboy Carty's track. So yeah, great album. From Skepta. But as always, the story behind the album is super inspiring because I was listening to Going Through It when I was in the gym. And I thought this song is really, really introspective, right? Really personal. Um, it's really touching, quite dark, very macabre. The whole album is quite macabre in, the, in that regard, right? It's very self-reflective, self-referential. It just seems like a little bit of a... It seems like he's come at crossroads, right? Skeptic's finally arrived at that point where he's starting to realise his position, realise the power he has, realise the influence he has, and he's really kind of like, you know, um, sitting... Um, what do you call it? Flexing into his seat a little bit more comfortably and we understanding the power he has, the position that he plays in the overall uk rap grime artistry scene and then having a look at some of the videos be, um pr uh, post release of the album and skip to kind of explaining the inf the inspiration behind the artwork um uh behind some of the artistic direction that he's taken behind the thematic ideas on some of the tracks it all makes sense and it all kind of relates back to this idea or this kind of thing that i've been thinking about lately especially with my career and the things that i've been doing <laughs> In the idea of um, focus, the idea of uh, putting a, doing away with distraction, and the idea of doing the work, right? I think there's been a lot of conversation in my head, right, around the ideas of just how much I need to be on social media, just how much I just how much I need to be, you know, putting myself out there and constantly putting out content, constantly communicating with others on social or on the internet. And if you know anything about my story, if you know where I've come from in terms of being a forum kid, being an early adopter on all the fucking social media media platforms, having a blog really early, having a podcast I do, that I do right here, recording mixes, I've done a lot of things. Um, uh, I've done a lot of I've done a lot of things. Um, I've done a lot of things that would require me to be front facing, right? To kind of be always on the platforms and always kind of doing these kind of things. And sometimes it's kind of done, it's kind of done, it's kind of been at the expense of my actual work, right? And then what ends up happening when you're constantly on these social media platforms is that you end up being a little bit of a voyeur, right? You end up creeping on other people's profiles and looking at what they're doing and kind of living vicariously through their space creative projects instead of doing your own which is obviously not the most advantageous thing that you can do so in the last few years i've kind of dedicated myself to kind of really knuckling down and focusing on my own career focusing on my own work so far that's yielded some good results right i've recently um achieved you know the top goal of having a thousand subscribers on youtube which has been something i've always wanted for a long time and it's allowed me to earn a little bit of money through making these videos on youtube so i'm very thankful for everyone that's watching these videos it's allowed me to upload podcasts onto my um, audio platform as well which has been awesome and i've got my subscriber count up there really high people are downloading my episodes all over the world that's awesome too shout out to you guys um it's allowed me to be a better DJ, so much so that I've been able to hold down a residency every Friday in a local pub around the corner. I've been asked to DJ at weddings. I've DJed in loads of warehouse parties and do some blah, blah, blah. This focus has really allowed me to do all these kind of things, allowed me to read, for, I don't know, 47 books last year, right, that I've been able to smash through. So I've done so many things uh, with this focus, but I've also come to the point where I've started to realize that it's not enough, right? There's still there's still things I need to do that haven't really gotten where they need to get to, and that requires even even more, and even and even and even a, a level of focus. It, this requires now a level of focus that's how do you describe it? That's even alien to the position I'm in now. And I think Skepta speaks a lot on that at the situation speaks on that level of focus needed at this moment uh, via this interview that he had with DJ Semtex, right? That I'm going to play here for you guys. And again, like I said, I think it really it's it's really interesting how in life, right? Especially if you're in tune in your in your and you're focusing on your things, you start to realize that there's a, there's there's sometimes a collective consciousness going around, like we're all kind of thinking and feeling the same kind of thing. 
at some time, some at some points, we're not able to all articulate it in the right way, right? Or we don't maybe have the platform to kind of get it out there to the masses in the right fashion. But then sometimes you might stumble across a video. It, it might be, again, it might be a, a confirmation bias, right? That, you know, you're looking for these things. But I think sometimes there is a collective conscious that goes around in the same vein that, you know, some runway shows, there'll be seven designers using the same color shade, the, sh the same shade of blue, right? Um, they're all designing in different studios. They all have different mood boards. They all have different teams. There's no cross-pollination happening, but somehow through the collective consciousness, they all have the same color blue that they use, the same shade of blue, or the same kind of thematic ideas. And that's because you're all kind of in tune and you're all kind of take, pulling from the same reference pool, right? And obviously, um, obviously interpreting in your own way, but you're pulling from the same pool, so it's no coincidence that it's going to be some um, correlation or some you know similarities there. And I think... This in the, this video, this interview with Skepta has kind of again confirmed for me just where I need to be in my career, and I hope that it kind of brings some illuminating um, notions to you guys too. I'm gonna to play a little clip of it now, and then we're gonna kind of continue talking about this in a minute. Where is it? There? Where is? Where is? Where is? Where is it? Here you go. Boom. Skepta with Semtex. Let's play that now. Was that, was that something where it was like spontaneous or was it something Talking like about the album. Distractions, man. Distractions, man. They're everywhere. They're everywhere, man. There's so much distractions. And I just, like, I think, like, I, I ain't smoked since December 31st. You get me? I'm not on the smoking thing right now. You look Sometimes. fresh. Sometimes I even stop the smoking when it's time to focus. You know what I'm saying? I already, I already put you on game on Crazy Lord. Well, it wasn't me, but Rocky. You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, I, sometimes the smoking thing is a bit crazy. And I ain't smoked. So I just use that to just knock myself away. I haven't really been around anyone. Like, I deleted my Instagram and my phone. I changed my phone number. And I just needed to, like focus on what I do then I, I really do this you know what I'm saying a lot of people use it to make peas a lot of people use it to get girls they use it for all this kind of stuff like they use it they use it to show off like I don't do music for that like I make music because I really do this like and that's something I've kind of very much um, agree with and I think I've kind of come to agreement with there's several parts of that interview or that clip that I kind of want to speak on Number one, the fact of um, distractions and being able to focus. I think that's something that we have inherently been, it's been inherently difficult for us at this current moment, especially with our smartphones and notifications and the amount of social media apps. And I think you get into this headspace when you're a creative that you want to be on all these platforms or to kind of boost your profile, to kind of put yourself out there, to maybe become an influencer, become somebody of influence, become a person of interest, become a destination point. A consultant, whatever it may be, right? You kind of see those as tools to kind of do those kind of things. But I think what ends up happening is that instead of them being tools, you end up being a slave to that platform. And instead of just using it to put out your point of view or to put out a particular kind of vision, you end up kind of checking those things as reference points, is, um, ch check those things for validation, which isn't the right way to go. And I think if you remember back from the interview that I posted the other day, um, the Cohen Frost interview with um, Shane Oliver from Hood by Air, he mentioned something along the kind of lines of, and Ian, Ian Ashe mentioned something along the lines of, um, we live in an age where people want to document everything that they're doing at every stage, right? It's too, and it's, he says something along the lines of sometimes it's too early to document what you're doing, right? You should maybe keep you should maybe keep toiling away in the workshop, do your work, inquire in the shadows, and then when you're ready to announce it, you can make as many Facebook ads as you want, blur it out on Instagram, get it all over Twitter. But at the time that you're working, concentrate on your work, hone your craft so you're not putting your work out there um, so soon. Um, like um, it's like a it's unripe avocado. Like let it let it get ripened, and when it's ready, it'll be super tasty. But don't rush it in the first place. That's one thing. And I remember taking that lesson from Aaron Bondaroff, someone who's kind of been you know is maybe the he's not the, the the most favorite person I've seen right now. But again, I kind of miss his influence. Aaron Bondaroff from a New York thing and Oh Wow Gallery, well formerly of Oh Wow Gallery and No Wave Radio. He was somebody that were out that would always that would kind of I think rude, like quite quite um often take these kind of sabbaticals six months or whatever off social media and kind of disappear completely and this is during the time where aaron bondorov was everywhere right he'd given interviews to like every tom dick and harry he'd be on youtube video interviews he'd be at gallery shows he'd be kind of the man about town right and he, he'd like serendipitously kind of like disappear into the shadows and kind of hide away 
and he'd come he kind of come back and always said oh this is me coming back and kind of you know refresh and ready to go again and kind of you know i had to go away unplug again you know and then come back in and kind of you know give, be able to kind of give you guys this new fresh ideas and i think nowadays we kind of live in a world where all our inspiration is taken online right you don't really take things away from online like especially ideas and things that you want to think about or at least start from a starting point of thinking the idea of offline right so you sit there and you think of an idea for a book or for a party or for a mix series or for a product you want to make maybe kind of conjure it up offline away from the internet and then once you want to kind of dig in deep and kind of um, expound your reference points or uh, find something that you could kind of you know piggyback off of maybe then tug and tap back into the internet that's probably a good way to go about it and then when it comes to the smoking thing the smoking you could equate that to drugs you could equate it to drinking you could equate it to go you know going to certain events that's again something that's very hard to kind of withdraw from because I guess the smoking thing like with Skepta would be something that's quite intrinsic to his personality, or quite intrinsic to his persona, right? With the same way I'd kind of equate it to mine when it comes to drinking or maybe doing drugs or something along those kind of lines. You equate it as part of your overall nightlife persona. This man about town, I do these, I do these sort of things or it kind of makes you comfortable or it kind of pulls you out of reality. It kind of speeds things up a little bit, right? It kind of slow things down or it kind of makes you a bit more ephemeral. But when you take those things away, all those, you know, um, chemical enhancements, whether they be alcohol or drugs, and you really focus in on you, you start to reflect and think, fuck, I've got a lot to do and I've got a lot of work to do, really, really a lot of work to do. And I guess that's something that I've kind of started to think about the, as the years have progressed, like of the amount of work I have to do and the things I have to do, do, do just going forward, I kind of discovered, you know, these distractions that I have in my life are really serving me no good. And if anything, they're kind of hindering my progress and kind of stopping me from really achieving my goals. And it's something that you have to really, really reflect on and kind of be really honest with yourself because you could easily, easily tell yourself, oh, it's all right. I'm doing okay. I just got to wait. I don't have the right friends. I need to get the right contacts. But it's like, no, 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 no. You can't control those things. Those things you can't control. Having friends, having the right network, having the right contacts, getting your stuff seen in the right places distribution all these, you can't control those kind of things this some of them you can maybe distribution you can't control where you put stuff or cool but you can't control who sees it when they see it the luck involved whatever but what you can control is the idea that to get better at something i think i always quit it back to that quote about running because i remember there was that period in time where it was trendy to kind of there was this really trendy like minimal running right don't run as much like run two miles a day and that's it it's enough to use to run a full mile to run a full marathon it's like no 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 you can run smart right like as i've shown you in the book the unbreakable runner which i, I recommend a few times by brian mckenzie where it kind of breaks down we don't need to run like crazy distances every week but the the premise is that if you want to get better at something you have to just do that thing again and again and again like skateboarding right you want to get better at skateboarding the brutal truth about skateboarding why people really respect skateboarders or why they know it's you know why they respect skateboarders because we've all tried to skate we've all tried to push a ball down the street we've all tried to ollie stationary we've all tried to ollie moving we've all tried to ollie up a curb ollie down the curb and we know how difficult that stuff is we know how long it takes for you to have the confidence to push a ball down the street and put and to purposely jump right up and down again on the on the moving object with wheels knowing that if you slip the board will shoot up under your legs and you bang your head in your concrete and maybe potentially die we know how difficult that thing is so when we see a kid down the road you know just speeding down the sidewalk right or the pavement and uh, jumping over a flipping uh you know lamppost or whatever it may be right onto the curb kick flipping off of, off a rail we're like wow we're impressed because we know how much work that takes we know how much work that took we know how often he was outside busting his ass on the, on the car park floor again and again trying to kick shove it trying to you know kick flip trying to ollie over something again and again we know how difficult it is and we know fundamentally the only way to get better at something is to do this stuff again and again and again but i think somehow with our own story we sometimes change the narrative we somehow fool ourselves into thinking that it's an it's, it's not that way inclined it's like another way but it's like no, no 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 there is no other way around it this is the way it's done this is the way it's done you have to do this thing repeatedly and i think we have to pull away from this idea that documenting everything on social is the way things are getting done that's not that's just showing people that you're doing stuff but i'm making the flip now where of course you can still show what you want to show but i'm making the flip of like saying no instead of showing what i'm doing i'm going to do what i'm meant to be doing in the shadows quietly doing what i'm doing because i think over the years especially with the djing stuff i've really especially even with the podcasting you know I, again i'm only speaking to a small sector of people small group of people i don't broadcast it to everyone like around the world that i'm doing this thing unless you see my my post on social 
on Twitter, on YouTube, you will know that I have a podcast in the first place, right? I try to keep it to myself. It's something I do for my own entertainment. But there's something about doing this thing over and over again, right? I'm 200 episodes in, right? Weekly recording. Um, the idea of talking into a camera, the idea of trying to clearly enunciate myself, which is, you know, not the hard, not the easy thing to do because I tend to talk, right, quite quickly. I need to maybe slow down my speech pattern. But the idea of doing this weekly all the time consecutively has improved the way that I do it, right? Has improved the way that I enunciate, improved the way that I think, the way that I present myself on camera, the way that I present myself via audio. So take that and extrapolate that into other areas of your life. What more could you be doing if you just kept away from posting everything on social, just concentrating on the work that you're doing? And I think this Skepta album really, 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 really um, drums it home to me. And if anything represents just how far ahead he is of the pack of the, you know, especially the UK pack of what he's doing in terms of the the, the stage. Like I saw him play at Premier Air, right, last year, and it was incredible. It was really fucking good performance. He smashed it. One of the only UK people I've seen play like especially rappers who plays without a, a backing track actually stands on stage and raps all his lyrics right has his friends come up on there and perform uh a couple of tracks here and there here here and there right gives them a look right allows them to play on a big festival stage in front of you know booking agents and managers all those coming like you would be able to book them in other events a real real guy who's able to kind of again expand his little artistry group into encompassing loads of up-and-coming artists who are able then to kind of go in and do big things and you can see why, because he's got this kind of mindset where instead of looking at the game and seeing all the things that everyone else is doing, I think he mentioned in the interview, saying everyone else is doing it wrong, he's trying to focus on what he's doing wrong and then trying to move forward from there. Let's play a little bit more of the clip and then we can move on. Mm. I'm really about music. And from the time I was just looking at what everything else was going on and just saying, oh, that's what, that's what, that's what. My oh, man's what. Why does he do that? Why did you do that? And it, but without making my own stuff. So it was. So that's why I say it's good for me to complete and not be distracted because now I don't have to think about what any any whack stuff that anyone else is doing. Like my album's out, and you know every song sounds different. It's all well produced. And that's a very true statement. True. Um, nothing true has ever been said. I think you see a lot in the hype beast comments, right? I think there's a lot of kids on there who generally have some misgivings or some kind of complaints about the people that they're, they're kind of like going hard at. But I think a lot of it comes down to kind of frustrated ambition, right? The fact that you, especially in streetwear, I think other aspects of life, I think you should take the criticism, you should take some criticism to heart or some of it you should just ignore. But I think in streetwear specifically, I think because it's such a low barrier of entry, because some of the people in streetwear, most of the people in streetwear are chances, right? They've all kind of made it you know, just through kind of trying things out, no one's really got a right to do anything, right? No one has ordained you to be a brand builder or to be a marketer or to be an influencer or to be a publicist or whatever it may be called. You just, you know, you kind of appoint yourself these kind of things by the way you kind of present yourself online, right? So I think because of that, there are some, there is some like um ill will to all the people that have made it who kind of jumped over the gate and kind of made it to the other side and are reaping all the benefits because again, because it's a niche subculture, if you make, if you're one of the only people that make it, all the rewards are going to be given to you, right? Because there's no one else to really give them to, right? You you see it with some of the models they use or some of the influencers that talk on the panels. It's the same kind of 10 or 20 people they use again and again and again and just rotate through them because once you have one person, why would you then go and get the other one? You know what they're going to bring to the table. You know how they speak. You know how they present themselves. You know they've got an active or captive fan base. It's an easy way to go around it. So I think for the ones on the outside, on the outside of the gate, it's kind of like, you know, you're kind of shouting over there, barking and pointing your finger and, you know, say, saying expletives to these people because they've made it over the gate. But what ends up happening is that when you're concentrating on your own work, when you're focused on fulfilling your own dreams, there is no time for that, right? Because there's so much work to be done. You don't really have the time to kind of figure out what anyone's doing is bad or wrong. And I think what ends up happening also is that when you're creating, you have sympathy towards what somebody is trying to do or what they are doing regardless because you know how much work it takes for that thing to be on hype beast it's not just an idea that just gets done in two seconds and it just gets thrown up on there it has to go through loads of approval it has to go through that kind of you know critical self-talk where you think you're not good enough and you think it's garbage and it has to get approved by your circle of friends and all this sort of stuff and blah blah blah, blah until it finally kind of gets onto hype beast. and sometimes effectively there's been there's a lot of things i've seen on hype beast that have been reported or i've seen on platforms prior a long time ago that no one's reported on and they've only suddenly now got it on there so sometimes that kind of feedback loop can be a bit delayed so i think again 
it's only for a certain group of people out there who kind of give a stuff give a stuff about this sort of stuff right but or give a shit about this kind of thing but i think for the most part if you're out there and you have some unfulfilled um potential in you you feel as if like there's you you have this thing that you want to say something in society you want to put your little mark on the little creative timeline of streetwear of culture that we have going on nowadays it really is important for you to step back away from social media concentrate on your work and use it as a tool to kind of showcase your work or your finished product right but use most of your time to educate yourself to read to go to galleries to kind of expose yourself to new environments to go on holiday to go to new places and then from then on you can build out your actual um you know work your body of work from there on i think going forward i think that's probably the best way to go about things and again like i said mentioned before um i really recommend you check out skeptic's album ignorance is bliss is probably one of my most favorite skeptic's albums to date from i say from uh yeah i say from maybe what's the what's the one with the boxing gloves all the way into now probably my my favorite one going forward i really can you check it out great production great themes all overall really great enunciation um he just see he just sounds clear which obviously makes sense because he hasn't been smoking weed just an amazing album overall really recommend you check it out 